Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden. I'm so grateful to be with you today. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite things. I'm going to be sharing a book with you, a book that's going to really help you to magnify the miracles in your life. But before we do that, let's start like I always start everything by bringing our awareness and our attention to our breathing. Help us to get grounded, centered. Whatever you're doing, if you're driving, please keep your eyes open, but otherwise allow yourself, no matter what you're doing, you could be walking the dog, you could be sitting at your desk, you might be at the gym, whatever you're doing, you can still bring your awareness to your breath and just noticing the breath, you don't have to change it. Breathing in the energy of expansion, breathing out whatever you no longer need. And just coming deeply into the now, allowing your mind to become calm, which makes it more receptive so that you can receive the inspiration and the information that you need from today's episode to magnify your miracles. And knowing that that's exactly what's going to be happening. Let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude. And we can begin. All right. Well, hello once again. And welcome, welcome. You know, in our last episode, we were talking about the money mistake that highly sensitive people make. And I went in depth about that, about using money as a boundary when you have a hard time having boundaries. And so we're going to continue this conversation uh, today and in the next two episodes. And I want to let you know that I'm so excited about our guest for the next episode because the next one's going to be Unblock Your Money Miracle. And I have a very special guest who's going to show you exactly how to do that, which is so exciting. But for today, this is another thing that you can start doing right away to help you start manifesting and magnifying the miracles around your finances. We want to remember that Mother Mary asked me to focus this month on this topic for you because there is a lot of pain and a lot of suffering and a lot of misunderstanding around the topic of money and especially with light workers. So today's episode, I'm really focusing on Light workers, highly sensitive people as always, but specifically light workers and spiritual entrepreneurs that tend to have a hard time charging what they want to charge, earning what they need to earn to really take good care of themselves. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my dreams is to have a world where light workers are happily, fully, full time employees for themselves. And what I mean by that is Reiki masters are full-time Reiki masters. Animal communicators are full-time animal communicators. Sound healers, hands-on practitioners, uh, inspirational authors, whatever, whatever it is. If you want to be able to be doing that full-time, you should be able to do that. But a lot of people I know, they do it on the side and they they do it because they have a day job. And not because they want a day job, but because they don't believe that they can make enough money. And this, my friends, is tragic. It's a tragedy to me because the world needs you to be a light worker. It needs you to be available. It needs you to be sharing your light with the world. That's why you're called a light worker. So in this particular episode with this particular book, Overcoming Under Earning by Barbara Stanny, overcome your money fears and earn what you deserve. We're going to help you learn a little bit about how to do this. Now, this is a book that has been out a long time. So this is not a new book. You could probably go down to your local library, which I highly recommend. Go to your library and get this book, Overcoming Under Earning by Barbara Stanley. She wrote this book a long time ago, and she's kind of moved on to bigger and better things. I think she her books now have to do with being a six-figure businesswoman or something like that. Yeah, this book is copyrighted in 2005. So it's been 
a while that this has been out and there's a whole new generation of people that she has inspired. But who is she? Let me tell you about who she is because she shares her story in this book. Barbara Stanny is an heiress. She is the heiress to the H&R Block fortune. Her father, I don't remember if he was the H or if he was the R. I forget which one he was, but he's one of, the, one of those two. And she inherited uh, quite a nice fortune being his daughter, and proceeded to lose her entire fortune. Now, actually, that's not quite exactly accurate. She didn't quite lose it. She ended up giving it away, meaning she let her husband be responsible for managing their finances, and he's the one that ended up losing it, making a lot of really bad financial investments and choices. The truth is, is he wasn't more qualified than she was, but she came from an era that believed that, well, you, you know, you let your husband take care of these things for you. So she did and ended up losing everything and had to start over. And so she shares her journey in this book and wants to let everybody know that no matter where you are and what you're doing, you can heal your relationship with money. And under earning is usually symptomatic of not having a healthy relationship with money. What is under earning? Simply put, it means that you're not making what you need to make to take excellent care of yourself. And I want to be clear with you that this is not about the number. So you might be making $20,000 a year, $200,000 a year, $2 million a year. Um, it doesn't matter. You could still be under earning. If you're making $200,000, but you need, really need $300,000, then you're under earning. If you're making 20 and you're doing great because you only really need 10, then you're not under earning. So I want to be clear that it's not about the number because you might be saying, oh, I need to charge a lot more. No, you need to be really honest about what you actually need and know that you deserve it. So in my land, in my world, this is a third chakra issue, under earning is really a third chakra issue because it's a self-esteem, self-worth type of an issue. Now I'm going to go over the under-earning quiz, and uh, she's got it here. I have the hardcover edition of this book, and somebody wrote in to me, thank you so much, and said, can you please tell us what page you're reading from when you're reading these fabulous books so we can read along with you? So I'm reading the hardcover book. This is page... Uh, let's see, 23, 24. I think this is page 25. It's not actually a number on it. Yeah, but this is page 25. And it's the under earning quiz. So let me read this to you and see if you see yourself in any of these questions. Question number one, I often give away my services, volunteering or working more hours than I'm actually paid. Is that you? Do you give away your time or your services? Number two, it's so hard to ask for a raise, or if you have your own business, to raise your fees. So hard that I just don't do it. Number three, I actually dislike money and or the people who have it. And you might not think that you have that, but a lot of times people have that if you have a negative opinion of people that have money. Number four, this is a big one. I am proud of my ability to make do with little. There's nobility in being poor. Now, I'm going to stop right there and say one of the things I've noticed about um, highly creative people, highly sensitive, highly creative people who don't have a lot of money. Remember, I talked about this before. You might be subconsciously using money for things that you're not giving yourself permission in your conscious walking around time. So remember last time I said, if you're not telling the truth and saying, I don't really want to take that trip with you. You might say, oh, I can't afford to take that trip with you. Well, similarly, if you're a highly creative person and you have not given yourself an outlet for your creativity, not having a lot of money gives you permission to become super creative because it's like, I got to figure this out, right? Got to be super creative. One of my very, very, very first clients from way back when, like, like 20, 25 years ago, one of the most creative people I ever met, but she did not give herself permission to be creative. 
And so she was always scrimping by with, with her money. And guess what she spent all her time doing? She made her children's clothing and she helped to make the curtains in her house. And she was making things constantly. And I finally said to her, what if you gave yourself permission to just be an artist and you were able to make things and maybe you could make things for other people and maybe you could get paid for it. But she had a rule in her head that, oh, well, artists don't make money. You have to be a starving artist, which is a subconscious belief. So this whole thing about being proud of your ability to make do with little, be careful of that. Number five, I blame someone or something else for my financial situation. Could be the IRS, could be my ex-husband. Number six, I find ways to avoid dealing with money. I could do bartering or I use credit cards. Number seven, I tend to sabotage myself at work, applying for jobs I'm not qualified for or low paying, uh, low reaching goals and, or I change jobs a lot. Number eight, I work very, very hard or I get into excess and then I collapse. Number nine, I fill my free time with endless chores and tasks. Number 10, I am in debt with little savings and no idea where my money is going. Number 11, I have a family history of debt and or under earning. Number 12, I am vague about my earnings. I overestimate or underestimate my income. Um, number 13, this is a big, big one for highly sensitive, spiritually oriented people. I continually put others' needs before my own. I continually put others' needs before my own. Now, one of the things that happens if, if you're a light worker, you're probably going to meet people who are in need of light, right? That's what happens. We're walking around, we're spreading our light, and we're going to meet people that supposedly need our services, and they're going to tell us that, well, they can't afford it or whatever it might be. And I think it's really important to have a way of responding to that that is in integrity for you. So one example is that maybe you have um, a certain number, like if you're, if you're a coach or something like that, you have a certain number of spots that maybe you'll offer a sliding scale, or maybe you have a certain number of things that you'll do if you're a workshop facilitator, you'll have a certain number of scholarships, like maybe you can give out one or two scholarships or something like that. So you feel like you have a way to respond to that with compassion. Absolutely. One of the things that I do is I have a price point uh, for working with me uh, for di different ways that you can work with me. So for people that they, they really don't have any money, they get to listen to this podcast, they get to watch my YouTube videos, they get to be on my mailing list. I have lots of things that I offer. I have low cost things, I have middle cost things, I have things that are more of an investment. So by having things at different price points, you can meet people where they are. That's how I helped myself with that because this was a really sticky area for me and I used to continually put others' needs before my own. Uh, question number 14, I am frequently in pain or stress around money. Question 15, recognition and praise are more important to me than money. So if you're the best in your field, but you're not making a whole lot of money, uh, a lot of times people will say, well, money's not the most important thing, which is a way of saying, I'm not really making what I need to make, but I'm trying to feel good about it. Um, and so, you, so this is part of it. And then questions 16 and on are more positive questions, like I am confident in my ability to make money. 17, I always live below my means. 18, I love money and appreciate what it does for me. 19, I'm very optimistic about my financial future. 20, I experience very little fear or insecurity around money. 21, I'm determined to get paid what I'm worth. And I'm not going to go over all these because there's like, there's uh, 30 questions here. But this is a quiz to just help you see where am I in this process. Now, I, I read this book. The reason I'm sharing it with you is because I did read this book because I can relate to a lot of these things. I've definitely put other people's needs before my own. I've had a difficult time with raising my fees sometimes. Um, I've had mixed feelings around people who have money. I used to blame people. I used to avoid it. A lot of these things. And so here's how she helps us in this book. So first, you have to decide you know, why does it matter to you? Are you ready to stop under earning? Are you ready to take care of yourself? 
And here are her five steps. I'm gonna read them to you, and I'm gonna tell you which one I think is the most important one for our conversation today. And I'll share a little bit with you from my experience working with this book. So step one is tell the truth. Isn't that the most important thing? You gotta admit where you are, what's going on, what do you actually need to earn? A lot of people don't even know, especially if you have a business, they think, well, what's the person that I know next door? What are they charging? I guess I'll charge that. And they have no idea what they actually need to charge to take care of themselves. Your situation is completely different. And this is true even if you are, are not a, uh, an entrepreneur, if you just have a job, are you, do, are you really clear about what you need to earn to take excellent care of yourself, to get all the self-care that you need, to get all the downtime that you need? If you are a light worker, you need a lot to, to be an excellent light worker. You need to take excellent care of yourself. Um, step number two is make a decision. You have to decide that you're going to do this. You have to decide that you're worth it. You have to decide that it matters. And only you can come up with a reason that it matters for you. So step number three is to stretch, to really stretch outside of what you've been doing before. That stretch might be charging more. It might be um, putting up boundaries. It, it means that you're going to be doing something different than you've done before. Step four is to create some kind of community. It's really easy to make change when you have people supporting you. It's really challenging when you don't have that support. That's why I'm so big on the energy of community. And five is to respect and appreciate money. And we respect and appreciate money the same way you respect and appreciate a person. You spend time with it. You keep your word. You are um, saying kind things about it. You're appreciating it, all of that. So of these two, I want to talk about step number two, which is make a decision. And I want to tell you my story of how this book really helped me. And when I was reading it, or you can listen to it, I think it's on Audible if you'd rather listen, I realized that I had done step one. I had told the truth. I was like, you know what? For me to be the kind of coach that I am, for me to be the intuitive coach that I am, the spiritual success coach that I am, highly sensitive as I am, I need downtime. I need excellent self-care. I need to eat really well. This is what makes me able to tune into your energy, even though I'm 2,000 miles away and I can zoom right in and I know exactly what's going on with you, even though you might not know what's going on with you and I can read your energy. It's because I'm highly sensitive and in order to be able to do that, I have to take good care of myself. I need to make sure I have enough rest, all of those things. Same things that you need, whatever you do. Excellent self-care, highly sensitive people. In order to become the best light workers we can be, we need to be strong in ourselves and take good care of ourselves. So I knew it and I knew the number, but I was afraid. I, I, I figured it all out. I looked at how much how much downtime did I need? How much vacation time would I need? How much money did I want to put into savings? How much did I need to be able to get the kind of um, you know, body work that I needed, support staff that I needed? Um, and that was a big one, hiring people to support me. And I looked at that number and the number scared me. I was like, oh my God, how am I ever going to charge that amount of money? And I just got really, really scared once I told the truth to myself. But what I did is I took myself out for a walk and I said, okay, the next step is to decide. You got to decide. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. What are you going to do? And I talked to all of my fears. People probably thought I was crazy because I was talking out loud. I was going out for a walk in nature and I was talking out loud to the part of me that was really scared, to the part of me that didn't feel good enough, to the part of me that's like, that's more than you ever charged before. Oh my God. Um, and I just talked to myself and I said, you know what? I know you're scared, but this is the truth. And this isn't just the truth like fairy tale. This is the truth that Mother Mary is having you see. She wants you to see what you actually need. And it's not just what you'd wish to have, what you'd like to have. It's not pie in the sky. This is what it takes to be able to do the level of work that you're doing. And the level of the work that you're doing is high level work. And so you need to be compensated accordingly. And I cried and I resisted 
And some days I still resist. Some days it still feels hard for me because there are people that charge so much more than I charge. And I know that they don't have nearly the experience that I have, but I have to go at my pace and I have to work with myself. And that's the thing I'm encouraging you to do. Overcoming under earning is a step-by-step -step process. The first thing you have to do is recognize and tell the truth that you are under earning. You're, if you don't feel peace around your money, you're probably under earning. If you don't earn enough to save what you need to save, then you're probably under earning. If you are working two or three jobs and you're not getting the rest that you need, you're probably under earning. If you are avoiding having conversations with your spouse or your partner because you don't want to you know, get into things around money, you could probably use some help. Now, a big piece of what is connected to this under earning is what I call codependency. Codependency is putting other people's needs before your own with the mistaken belief that if you do that, somehow they'll take care of you at some point. This is a very dangerous way to live. And it's extremely dangerous when it comes to your money. So whatever small step you can take to take excellent care of yourself with your finances, I strongly recommend you start somewhere. Just start somewhere. As you start to change your beliefs, as you start to say, you know what, I deserve more, you're going to open your mind to possibility. Now, if you're somebody that has a job, and you start telling yourself, you know what, I really need to be making $30,000 more a year than I'm making now, your mind is going to start to become open to how is that possible? What other jobs are there? Where else could I apply? And you're going to start being in the energy of that $30,000 more. But if you never ask yourself that question, you're never going to see those opportunities because they're right there. Your ability to have a money miracle is here right now. You just have to be clear that you're worth it and it's possible for you and it's not a pipe dream. It's the truth. It's the truth. And if you are an entrepreneur like me, it's super easy because all we have to do is come up with a new idea, a new idea that would be worth $30,000 more a year or whatever it might be. Just come up with an idea and put that idea into place. But in order to do it, you need to get over whatever that fear is. So this book by Barbara Stanny, I think is priceless. There are a couple of other books I'm gonna put into the show notes for you so that you can take a look and see. You might not be someone that's under earning, you might be somebody that's looking to do a few other things. Maybe you wanna break through some barriers. Maybe you wanna understand more about the spirituality of money. I have a few of those books uh, listed in the show notes for you as well. But please, my friend, start here. Know that you are worth it. And even if you have not made enough your whole life, you can start today to change this pattern. I want to see a world of happy, well-supported, full-time light workers. I want to see the light workers of the world, along with everybody else, but especially the light workers of the world, let go of this idea that you can't be well supported sharing your light with the world. This is one of my favorite things to do is help spiritual entrepreneurs break through these barriers and start to see the truth and get in alignment with their own energy. You can do this. You can do this. And you don't have to do it alone. If it's something that you want my help with, then go to my website and let's set up a time to talk. If you want to find somebody else to work with, go to their website and set up a time to talk. You don't have to do this by yourself ever at all. And this beautiful book, Overcoming Under Earning, can help you. There are 12-step groups around money. I'll put that in the show notes as well. If you want to check out some 12-step groups, that's absolutely free. You can do this. You can do this. And most importantly, you deserve it. Remember, that this isn't about the number. It's not about, oh, you know, when I make a million dollars, then I won't be under earning. Well, you will be if you're spending too. 
or if your expenses are for two million and you're only making a million. It's not about the number, it's about your consciousness. This is a third chakra issue. We need that third chakra to be strong to get you to your heart, heart chakra, which is what? Your deepest heart's desire and your purpose. We have to have that strong third chakra. You have to know that you deserve in order to be strong in that heart chakra and allow your life purpose to really flourish. All right, my friend. So overcoming under earning, go out, read it. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know your thoughts about this. Remember next week, we're going to be talking to somebody who has a fabulous technique to help you unblock your own personal money miracle. And as always, 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 we know, what do we say? That the key to magnifying your miracles is to remember your miracles already here. Thank you so much, my friend. Bye-bye.